welcome to our service this morning. So glad you could be here on this beautiful Sunday morning here at New Hope. Let's stand together and sing hymn number 56 to God. Be the glory, great things he had done. Let's all stand together. Hymn number 56, all we stand is to God be the glory. Let's sing out all our might. Let's sing on that verse. Sing with me.
Let's stand and sing some more praise to our Lord this morning. Stand with me. It's hymn number three. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Let's sing hymn number three together. Sing the first, second, last dance. So I'm going to go and just keep on that first hymn with me. So if you come and meet me there right after service, we'll make it brief and get some information to you. 
and let you be on your way. And so all those going into seventh grade and those who just graduated are welcome to go with us this summer. Um, also, this Wednesday night is our next fundraiser dinner. We've been doing this uh, for the first, we started last month, and going this month, every month, the last Wednesday night of the month, we're going to be having a uh, fundraiser dinner right before service starting at 6 o'clock. And you see your bulletin there, uh, the meal that's prepared. Miss Marie and Brother Billy have been helping us there, some of the finest hardworking cooking people I've ever met. Appreciate them so much and help us with a lot of things. Appreciate them. And Brother Billy drove for us this past uh, Friday night to go to me. But anyways, sign up, <clears throat> sign up for one of those meals if you want one. Five dollars includes all that plus your drink. And so uh, sign up for that. And also don't forget about the Blue Ridge Community Yard Sale. Um, I do have a sign up sheet. We do have some people that are interested in buying a, a space for that. And there's some confusion with that, I know. And, but I want to let you know it's $20 and you get two spaces with that. So $20 a space for that, we're calling it. And so you can purchase that out there and, and sell your stuff. And, and we'll have concessions available. So $20 a space. Uh, for that, and sign up if you can and get some information this afternoon and after church. We need some information on it, okay? Inquire, we don't have fireworks, and I give you that off, all right? Thank you very much. Well, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning. We're glad you're here. We, uh, we've had a long week uh, this past week. It was a wonderful week, a joyous week. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of you that had a part in the missions conference. It was a Tremendous success, and we we just had a, a great time in the Lord. Uh, many missionary families coming through, and my they every every missionary family. I didn't realize that every, everybody had five kids each, either grown or young ones, and I didn't plan it that way. But uh, my Lord, I mean, every missionary family had five young ones or more, and uh, what a blessing that was. And uh, if you were here with us tonight, it was a tremendous blessing to see the children perform. Wednesday night and sing. It was just wonderful. We had many, many parents of our daycare folks here. I think we had about 162 here out some uh, Wednesday night. That was tremendous. And many of them were visitors, and we thank the Lord for that. And God just recently blessed, and uh, the kids, the children did wonderful. And I, I just praise God for what took place there. And uh, uh, usher, y'all, Brother Kim, let's go ahead and hand this out right now. Uh, I want to get uh, one to each family, Brother Larry, and you uh, just one per family. I, I think i got about 100 copies, so everybody should be able to get one. And this, what this is, that you're going to hear about this uh, next couple of weeks. I'm going to be uh, preaching and teaching a little bit about this um, missions and about what Faith Promise is all about. What you have here is a copy of the missionaries that we support monthly at New Hope Baptist Church here, okay? Please get this. Use it as a prayer letter. And uh, this tells you the different countries. I mean, I'm looking down through here. Philippines, uh, Croatia, Wales, India, Canada, Mexico, Japan, Hawaii. I, I might want to be a missionary to Hawaii myself. Amen. But, uh, uh, you know, just Argentina, Ukraine, the country of Ukraine, going through quite a bit of things right now. We need to pray for the country. We've got missionaries over there. England, West Africa, Africa, South Africa, prison ministry. I mean, there's just Germany. So many different countries that we support missionaries uh, from this church. Now, I want you to be a part of this. This is what the missions conference is all about. This tells you how much each, uh, each month they receive. And we're going to be talking to you more about that as we go along. And uh, I don't want you uh, to be in the dark about what we're doing. I'm telling you right now, uh, New Hope Baptist Church is involved in missions around the world. And I praise God for that. And so uh, we're going to be saying more about that. I want you to take this home, uh, pray about this, pray over this, and be a part of it, okay? Every Sunday when we come in here, and I'm, I'm going to be preaching a little bit about this this morning because I want to get you saturated with this and the purpose of what God's plan is in the Word of God. And I don't do a lot of this preaching like uh, talking about money and things. I don't even do that a lot. Uh, I think giving ought to be between you and the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Spirit of God that lives inside of you. Being a child of God, saved by the grace of God, you have the Spirit of God living inside of you. He ought to direct your life, and He ought to direct what you do in your life, especially when it involves your church. And so, 
use this and let's pray over this and pray for you missionaries and Lord willing, Lord willing, we might be able to support some of these other brand new ones that we brought in uh, this past week. I tell you, the Subtle Brothers were a tremendous <laughs> blessing to us, that family. Uh, both families were just tremendous. Mom and Dad got to come up from the North Carolina. They, they were just overwhelmingly thankful for what we just did to them, feeding them, taking care of them. And they're just a, a very cordial, wonderful people to be around. I thank God for that. So, uh, folks, uh, that's what missions is all about. And I hope that you'll be involved in that and take part in that as well. Don't, don't, don't forget your missionaries. Pray for them. And if you can financially give, uh, fill it out on your envelope. We've got offering envelopes that says missions. And you can give to missions. And whatever you give will go right into the missions fund. It will go right into supporting these missionaries. Hey, everybody ought to have a part in that in this church right here. Amen? Amen. And I thank God for it. We just had a great week. I want to thank all of those of uh, you that sacrificed. Many of you cooked. Uh, many of you prepared. Brother, Brother Billy and uh, Ms. Marie helped us so much. And many of the ladies back there helped serving and put their hands on it. And I praise God for being able to take care of of all of these missionaries. I'll guarantee you, and you're going to hear it preaching just a little bit, the blessings from heaven is going to fall on this place when you entertain and bless missionaries. Amen? That's the heartbeat of God. And it's, it's, it's a part of God's heart. And He commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the only way they're going to do that is through local churches just like this. And I want to be a part of God's work, don't you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just want to thank all of you for the tremendous time that we've had. And, and you be you be praying about that. Be, please be praying about also about our friends and many of our relatives and uh, folks that are sick. And we've got folks that have been so sick and different folks have been out. Uh, you know, I learned something about missions conference in the wintertime. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, we just come off a 20-inch snow and had missions conference right up behind that. And it's hard to get everybody outside and get them to hear the church. And I understand all that. And we'll be okay with that. But still, we've got an opportunity to do our part. Amen? Amen. And you be praying for those that are sick. And uh, I pray for Miss June always. We've got other folks that we are praying for. Some are not here today that I know would be here. And uh, many of you were affected by that snow. Miss Donna was affected in that about three days. Amen? And couldn't even get home almost. But anyhow... Uh, we, we just want to be uh, prayerful for one another and uh, be praying for those who are sick. We always want to be mindful of our, our, our church family. Amen? And be prayerful about that. It's good to see you today. And let, let's have the ushers come this morning. You ushers come on and we'll receive the offering. And you give unto the Lord as God has blessed you. And I, I, I'm, able, I'm glad I'm able to give to God's work. I mean that. I've been given to the Lord for many all of my, most of my adult life. I've tried, I've tried many ways. I've tried to outgive God, and He blessed me so much. And then I tried to do it another way and tried to keep back, and then God had to whip me a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Hello. And He'll do that as well. But uh, you know, God's more concerned about your motive than what you're giving. You're gonna see that here just a little bit. Let's thank Him that we are able to give unto the Lord. Let's pray that God bless us this year as we try to entertain helping our missionaries. How many, how many people do you reckon will come to know the Lord? Amen. I mean, how many people will be in heaven through all these countries, all these missionaries we support? Amen. How many people do you reckon will be in heaven? Isn't that wonderful today? Amen. Let's pray. Father, Amen. thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. More than that, to give the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the glorious message, Lord, that Jesus saves. Thank you for the opportunity. And that's what every church, whether it's here in Roanoke or overseas, uh, uh, Lord, they're, they're having church overseas just like we're having church here today. And Lord, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Thank you that we can spread the message and give the word of God out. I pray even for one more soul today. Thank you for the souls that were saved this past week in our church. And, and Lord, how you spoke to hearts and blessed hearts. And, 
And Lord, I pray for our missionaries on our list here. Lord, help us to be, be able to always help them and give up, Lord, our prayers to them. But Lord, financially help them out and keep them on the field so they can reach others for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this church. Bless now today, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Today, I'm glad to see the sunshine. Amen. I'm on you. Yes, sir. Well, good news, yeah. Pastor. Name's already said. Uh, this morning we want to have special prayer through our church for our middle granddaughter. Uh, she's going to have uh, serious back surgery in just a few days. So I'm going to really mention that, and then we'll stand. Little Kaylee will turn 13 next month. She's the one with the heart problems. And she took a growing spurt this year. And uh, she's going to have to have surgery for scoliosis. It's sitting at 74%. They say if it gets to 100%, they can't do anything. The 
problem is they've got to get her off of the Coumadin to have the surgery, and that can cause you to bleed to death internally. Or if it gets too thick the blood, it can cause blood loss. So they can't do it in the regular section where they do it. They've got to get it in the heart section where in case she has problems, they can do that. So pray that they can get her in as soon as possible. Amen. And it'll work. Stay with us, let's close trip together and then the trip. Heavy this morning, and 
I was thinking this, the Lord worked this out about this song, you know, Aaron and I talk and our plans went out, and, and she suggested this song this morning. I know now why the Lord did that today. Uh, why did You know, we don't understand why things happen. You know, we don't understand what anybody's facing, you know, a young person, 16-year-old, why he would kill himself. Uh, but, but the Lord knows, and the Lord has a plan for that. And, you know, we don't understand, but, you know, we have a Father who knows what we need and what, what we need to hear. Amen. Amen. So that's what this song talks about this morning. There are moments on our journey following the Lord when God illumines every step we take. There are times when circumstances make perfect sense to us as we try to understand each move He makes. But when the path grows dim and our questions have no answers, turn to Him.
how the devil can blind us and just uh, take a young life like that, just sniff a love young life like that out of here. So that's what this is all about right here. That's what church is all about. Right, amen. I'm glad to report to you there's hope in this book. Amen. amen. Right. There's life in this book. Amen. And it's all about him. Amen. amen. That's right. This morning I I'm glad that as a church you can come in here and God already knew about your burdens before you walked through the door. Amen. But I'm glad that you can come and bring your burdens to the Lord. Amen. He can help you if you'll bow the knee. Amen. Amen. And Ray and Ray Vine and Miss Marie went up the road there. And their granddaughter had that surgery and things were going well. <clears throat> you pray for Ray and them as God helps them through theirs. And now that Brother Carter, Miss Loretta, going through the same thing. What about your granddaughter? Right. Amen. 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 We need to be praying for you. Amen, brother. I want to take one verse. I'm in Proverbs chapter 11. I want to springboard off of this verse right here. Proverbs 11, verse number 24. I want to thank all of the visitors that are here today. We've got some folks visiting with us. We're glad you're here. Amen. This dear lady right here, we're glad she's here. And uh, we don't want her to be a stranger. We want her to feel welcome. Amen. 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 And uh, Brother Brian, Christy, and these folks over here, I heard your youngins went out on that adventure there Friday, and they survived it. Amen. So I'm glad that, I'm glad of that, that uh, the young people are always doing something, and we praise God for that. So any other visitors here today, I'm kind of missing maybe some, but we're glad you're here. We want you to feel welcome. Uh, I'm going to do something today because uh, as a pastor, there's uh, several things that we take care of. We just came off of a, a missions meeting and a missions conference, and uh, we were pounding away missions, missions, missions. And I told them, and I asked the Lord, and I've been talking about, thinking about this, and what, I was going to, what I'm going to do is take the next couple, two or three weeks, and we're going to, <coughs> we're going to be putting out a faith promise pledge or faith promise card here in the next few weeks or maybe what the Lord might speak to your heart about giving towards missions this next week. But I want to take the Word of God and explain it to you, okay? Because some of you have heard it, some of you don't know what it is, particularly from the Word of God. And I want to talk to you this morning especially about the blessings of the Lord and what God can do in blessing our lives, particularly through the avenue of giving. Now, mind you, and some of you that are busy are going to think, well, that's all that preacher preaches about. Uh, assure these folks that that's not all I preach about. Amen? Amen. I don't even remember the last time I've addressed something like this. I've been here almost two years. Amen? But we're going to get into it the next couple of weeks. And I promise you, if you hear me and understand the promises of God, you will be blessed. I have never been able to give unto the Lord where I haven't in return got something back from the Lord. Not that that's the motive behind it to get something back, but God just blesses a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Now here's a principle I want you to look at in Proverbs uh, chapter 11, verse 24. Y'all got it? Proverbs 11, 24. Amen. <clears throat> verse 24 says, notice this, there is that scattering. Notice this. And yet increase it. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Let's read that again. There is that scattereth. In other words, somebody that scattereth. And yet, because of his scattering, the Bible says, increase it. And there is that withholdeth more than meat, but the withholder. The Bible says it tended to poverty. So there's two fork, there's a fork in the road that goes one and one way. One is the scatterer, and the other one is the withholder. The scatterer, the Bible says, the scatterer, the Bible says, he increases it. Yet that which one withholds, the Bible says it tended to poverty. There's a principle there that God's given, and I want to bring that out, and I want to bring the blessings of the Lord into you today and see how good God can be through this. If you'll hear the Word of God today, I promise you it'll be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Word of God. 
May it give increase in our ears, Lord. May we be hearers of the word, but not only hearers, but doers as well. Thank you for each and every one that's come today. Thank you for the beautiful weather. We can come out and fellowship. Lord, I pray you'll bless the service tonight at 6 o'clock. And we come back around the Word of God again. Lord, bless now this hour. We pray that you'll get glory and honor what's said and done. We'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. It's a blessing to give. Say amen right there. Amen. amen. It's always a blessing to be a part of the Lord's work. Amen. It's amazing that He would allow such of us to be a part of the wonderful work of God. I was uh, I was out, and I wanted to I, I want to tell you why I'm, I'm preaching this and how I'm kind of relating the message. Uh, last week when we had that tremendous snowstorm, my truck was the only one that would make it up on the mountain. Praise God for a little bit of four wheel drive. Hallelujah. Amen. I left the poor little civil car down here in the parking lot, and it got snowed over, and the parking lot got snowed over, and here we go. And uh, we uh, we came back with uh, the tractor blew a tire, and so uh, Brother Ray, after we dug him out, came back down here, and we were down here in the evening, and uh, he was out here shoveling the rest of it. Uh, Mitch and Mike and those guys uh, did half of it, and the tire, the tire blew up on the tractor, and so Brother Ray came down his truck, and I came down with him. And so I came in here, and it was evening time, about 4 or 5 o'clock, it was getting dark, and my car was coming over the snow, of course, you know, and, and I got in the car, and I turned the key, and that thing said, rrr, 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 rrr. I said, oh, Lord. And so uh, here I go, and I asked Ray where the where the, we have, we can't keep cables around here, so I had to go find and hunt down cables, and I had my truck, so I got out there, and I was charging it up. But I had a wonderful time. I bought a 2006 Pontiac uh, in 2006. It was just fairly new. And uh, you know how those new ones are. They're, everything is different about it. You know, everything is different about it. As I found out real, surely real quick. I opened up to find the back. You know, most normal size, it ain't Japanese made or something. Have a normal battery with a head on it. Amen? Not the Pontiac. No, 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 no. And so I began looking for I had the cables out. I hooked it up in my truck, ready to go. Okay? So I'm looking for positive and I'm looking for negative. I'm looking for a cotton picking battery. Amen. <laughs> they ain't even a battery in that time. <laughs> and I'm looking for it. Where is it? I, I'm a, you know, it's there. Some, it's got to have something that charges that thing. You know what I mean? And so. I couldn't find it. I couldn't, I couldn't, it, I mean, it wasn't there. It, and so, you know, all, the least that all men's pride wants to do is get out the handbook. So guess what I did? I got out that stupid handbook. And I started looking for battery. I, I wanted them to see if they had battery in the book. And sure enough, I found it. It had underneath a plastic cover. You had to pull the covering off, okay? Okay, I didn't see that. Underneath the cover was a little knob. That was the positive, okay? No bad, just a bunch of fuses and different things like that. You had to pull the cap off. There's a little, had a little, you know, a little plus, which means positive. There's the positive little bolt there, right? No bad, no bad, just one, you know what I mean? So I'm looking for the negative. There ain't no, you know? The negative, here's the positive way up here in the engine. The negative was way over here where the, chain, where the oil thing is. I said, God, found it. I ain't never in my life. <laughs> and it was dark. And so my first attempt, ladies, do you know what happens when you get them backwards? <laughs> you know it in Egypt. It wasn't dark long. Praise God, sparks were flying all over the place. It was going every which way. Although I had them as a country boy backwards. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I figured that out real quick. I couldn't say. It was dark. And so finally I got it right, and finally I charged it. And I've been thinking about that positive and negative ever since I got electrocuted out there in the yard. Out there in the yard. <laughs> Amen? And so we got, we got to fix this running well, okay? Amen? But I got to thinking about the Word of God, and I've been chewing on a lot of verses this week, just reading it over, studying it over 
And I just want to bring that out today while I'm thinking about positive things and a little bit of energy running in me. Amen. What are the positives and what are the negatives when we think about giving? When we think about it. And guess what? There are a whole lot of them. Amen. I want you to get over here. Get over here the last book in the Old Testament, Malachi. You know so many of you know this. And it was preached a little bit the other night. And so uh, since how 192 of you weren't here the other night, I thought I'd rerun it again. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get over here in Malachi chapter 3 a little bit. And look at this thing about what God is saying about this thing. Give God's people uh, in Malachi's day. I mean, things were going on in Malachi's day. And I'm in Malachi chapter 3. And it, it gives us a portion about uh, this thing about giving unto the Lord. And so uh, the Lord was looking at these people in Malachi's day. And uh, the basically, uh, they were they had a wrong, they had a heart problem. They didn't have a giving problem. They had a heart problem. Are y'all with me? And when you have a heart problem, you're going to have a giving problem. Amen. And when they had fallen away from the Lord and gotten away from the Lord, and and uh, I tell you today, uh, I, I want to have my heart right so my pocketbook will be right. Right. Amen. Amen. Because what I do for the Lord and give for the Lord is going to answer. It will never return void. Praise God, giving into the work of the Lord is always productive. Now I say that's a plus sign. That's a positive sign. You can't give to the Lord and you can't out give the Lord. That's wonderful, isn't it? Amen? And, and, and then God lets us have a part in it. But uh, Paul wrote about God examining our hearts and our motives uh, uh, for giving. Not the amount that we give, but the, uh, the motive in our giving there. I, I, and, and like that verse that we just read a while ago in Proverbs, he that scattereth that shall get increased. Are you with me? Uh, the person that scatters is giving there and throws it all out and gives it all out. The Bible says there will be increased. But there on the flip side, those that withhold it shall come to poverty. And there's a principle that God gives us in that. We see here in Malachi's day that people uh, had forsaken the Lord. And they had drifted away from the Lord. And they had walked in. Uh, uh, they weren't walking with Him. And because they weren't walking with Him, it's because their heart was not with Him. And, and when your heart doesn't walk with the Lord, uh, you, you won't walk with the Lord. Amen? That's why people drift in and out. Or it's over with. It's not missing Sunday night. Are y'all listening to me today? Is anybody listening to me today? Y'all got your ears on out there? They start missing Sunday night. And the next thing you know, they miss Wednesday night. And the next thing you know, they start saying, well, where's what's his, what's your name? Where's what's his name? Where'd they go? What happened to it? I'll tell you what happened. The heart drifted away. Amen? And when their heart drifted away, their feet started dip, drifting away. And next thing you know, the work of God, the cause of God in their life, and they lose the blessings of the Lord. And that's exactly what's going on here in Malachi. I got a good little outline real quickly, so I'm going to go real quickly here. When we're disobedient and disrespectful and disconnected and defiant and detached and dispassionate toward the Lord... I may say this, when all these things of disobedience and, and defiance and detachment and, and disconnect that come uh, to the Lord, it will affect the blessings of our lives. Now my question to you today is this, do you want to be blessed or not? Amen. 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 Do you really want to be blessed of the Lord? I, I want to be blessed. I, I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be blessed. Amen. We have a great God that wants to bless us. Amen. Amen. And he loves you and he wants to bless you. And I believe with all my heart that putting Christ first in our life is the key to enjoying the blessings of the Lord. And I just Amen. believe that. And uh, I know that in my heart that I've tried to put the Lord first. And by doing so, God has blessed my life and blessed my family and blessed all the things uh, that I have here. And what we see here, uh, as God is speaking to Malachi here, we see a people that just basically has uh, they, their relationship uh, has gotten away from the Lord. Look at verse number 8 here, verse number 7, uh, verse, chapter 3, verse 7. It says, even from the days of your fathers, notice this, you are gone away from mine ordinance and have not kept them. He says, return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, but ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet have ye have uh, robbed thee. Uh, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offerings. 
So they're going around defiant, and they're saying, where have we robbed you? Did we rob you? Where have we robbed you? Like that. The Bible says in verse number 7 that they went away from the Lord, and the Lord's trying to get them to return back to them. Amen? And get them to come back to the Lord there, and get them to get back walking in the steps and fellowship with the Lord. And I tell you, the greatest place in the world is to be a child of God and walking in fellowship with your Heavenly Father. There ain't no better place in the world to be with that right there. Amen. Amen? When we get out of fellowship, we see here, we see here that God begins to tell them and just point blank uh, shoots them right between the eyes and says, hey, you're robbing God and you've robbed me. And so uh, God is concerned about our relationship to Him. Uh, he's concerned about your relationship with Him. And, and boy, we need, to, we need to realize if He does not have your heart, He does not have anything. Uh, amply illustrated in this chapter. If, if, if the Lord has your heart, then He has everything else. Amen. He has it all. And so this is why we are urged to, to love the Lord with all of our heart and give Him our, our, all, our all to Him. 2 Corinthians 8, verse number 5 says this, And this they did, at, 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 not as we hoped, but first gave their own self. Listen to that. But first gave their own self to the Lord and to us by the will of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and verse 5 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. The Lord commands us with all we've got to love Him. Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you right now, listen to me, hear me now. <clears throat> We're not really talking about money. We're talking about our love that's in our heart. Right. right. Amen? Amen. I loved the Lord a long time ago. and ran into Him a long time ago, and He changed my life. And that caused me to give my all to Him. I wish I could give Him more. Amen? Amen? And we need to look at it this way. And so Malachi continues to explain that, that God's people were not enjoying God's blessings. And, and they were not enjoying the Lord. And the fact was they were robbing God and, 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 and their offerings and in their tithes. Yet they were still living in denial and deception. And so what does the Bible say here in verse number 9? What's the first words? Because God went upon and told them what we're doing. What's the first verse, verse number 9? Ye are cursed with a curse. Y'all see that? For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So, so if you want to do something here today, put a plus on one side, and let's write down the pluses on one side, and then put the negative on the other side, and praise God like I found it the other day. And there are negatives, amen? And you can find them. The negative one here is this. Uh, you curse. Right. Amen? On the positive side, you're blessed. You see that? I don't know about you, but I don't have too much education sense, but I believe I'm going to be able to help the positive side and be blessed with you. I sure don't want to be on the cursed side. Amen? The word cursed there carries the idea of being to be bound up. But I mean to be to have a, a shell over us, if you will. To, it's called binding uh, with, a, with, with a shell. I mean, when, when, when God puts a curse on you, buddy, I mean, that's pretty serious business right there. And God said, you're cursed with a curse. You're bound up now because God cursed them. Uh, and begin, he begins to show them why they were cursed because they, they robbed the God. And so we see, we see number one, the in, individual was cursed because of their corrupt sacrifice and offerings. The priesthood was cursed because of their hypocritical service here. And the whole nation was cursed because they were robbing God in tithing and offerings. Listen to me. Listen here today. When you rob God and you're giving, you're robbing yourself. Right. How about that? You're robbing yourself. I don't want to rob myself. Do you? I've had others rob me. <laughs> Amen. I believe I had a few mechanics in times past rob me. Amen. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. But I don't want to rob myself. How about that? So we see here, we, we've got to learn the gratefulness. Uh, here's, here's a few positives real quick. Let me give this one. Abraham was grateful for God's help. And he tied. And he was grateful to God because God defeated his enemies. Now listen to this verse right here. Genesis 14, verse 20. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. Notice this. And he gave him tithes of all. Abraham gave tithes of all. He blessed, he got blessed by giving his all to God. Tithe 
tithing to the Lord because God's protecting him from his enemies. Amen. I would put on the positive side over there protection from the Lord. When you give to God, you guess what? He'll take care of those who give to him. Amen. Amen. He protects us. Amen. And that's what Abraham said. He got protection. How about Jacob? Jacob gave tithes up to the Lord. The Bible says in Genesis 28, the Bible says, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth uh, uh, unto thee. In other words, he gave a tenth unto the Lord because of the stuff that God blessed him. He wanted, he wanted the, he, the pillar that he gave shall be God's house. Uh, he, brought the, he brought the tithes because of God's house. He was around God's house. And because the Lord blessed him, he said, I will give you a tenth of everything I've got. That's the Old Testament over there. Do you know that tithing didn't begin until uh, the time of Moses? It only began until the time of Moses. God gave the, the, the tithing system in the Word of God. I don't have a lot of time to preach all this this morning. But Leviticus 27, verse 30, uh, the, the first thing they did, there were two tithes that were required. Let me give these real quickly. Number one, number one, the annual tithe for the maintenance of the Levites. The Levites were the servants. The Levites were the preachers, if you will. The Levites were the ones that took care of the service in the tabernacle. Somebody had to change the oil in the lamp. Somebody had to take care of the showbread. Somebody had to keep the fire going at, at, at the burnt sacrifice when they slew the lambs every day. Are you with me? That took a lot of work, a lot of service, a lot of things going on to upkeep the workings of the tabernacle there. And they brought an offering, all of the nation of Israel brought an offering there to take care of the maintenance of, uh, for the Levites, to take care not only of the Levites, but they were to take care, as we would say, to take care of the church. In other words, somebody got to pay the light bill, amen? somebody got to take care of the things around the house of God. That's what they were doing. They brought a tithe and offering. Guess what happens to you when you don't bring the tithe and offering? Somebody else has to pay the light bill. That's right. Don't, don't bite his head. I ain't through yet. I'm just getting started here. Are you with me? But we see here, let me give you this. A second time was brought to Jerusalem for the Lord's feast. In other words, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 14, 22, Thou shalt truly, thou shalt truly tithe of all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year to year. How about that? In other words, they tithed of the corn that came out of the corn field. Right. They tithed in our, of the squash, of the beans. Are y'all listening? And they brought that tent to the Lord and as God blessed the field and as God blessed their crop and as God blessed their harvest, they tithed the, that unto the Lord. And by the way, I just believe if you're a farmer out there and you give tips to God out of the farm, don't you believe God will bless the farm? He'll bless the crop. That's exactly what the principle is in the Word of God. Amen. Oh, my Lord, we need to learn that. Everything we have today, listen to me, is from God. Amen. Amen. Everything belongs to God. The tithe is an acknowledgement of the giver that all that he has does belong to the Lord. So when we refuse to return to him part of what he's given, we rob him. We're saying in essence to the Lord, all I have is mine, not yours. It's not yours, Lord. It's mine. You ever thought about who gave you air to breathe? Who allowed you to get up out of that bed? I got a pretty slow to slap the bikes out this morning. Amen. I was wrestling around with my one-year-old grandson yesterday. He had his one-year-old birthday party yesterday. Now my back feels it today. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm here. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? We, 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 everything we have. I, I mean, I read this one use of money. One's use of money is often a barometer of his spirituality. Hello. Right. One's use of money is usually a barometer of his spirituality. Now some words in here that God tells us today. Today we have what's called in the church that which is called grace giving. Turn over where we're living real quickly. Our time's getting away from us, so I'm just going to jump to it today. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16. Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians 16. Let me show you some things real quick. We'll get you on out of here. I, 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 I know this is not popular preaching, but somebody's got to preach it. Amen. 
I want to be on the positive side, not the cursing side. Amen? I want to be on the protection side, the blessing side. Jacob said it was a pillar. I want to be on the pillar side. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, you said, Preacher, how am I supposed to give my tithes? How do you do it? 1 Corinthians chapter 16, look at it, verse 2 and 3. You read these words and it will bless you, okay? All right, I'm in verse number 2. Well, verse number 1. Now concerning the collection of the saints, you see that? As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. You see that? The collection of saints. So, verse number 2. Upon what? Here's how you give. You say, preacher, how, how do I give? There's a fourfold principle right here. You can mark them in your Bible. Number 1. Here's number 1. Verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay, it, lay by him in store as God has prospered him, and there be, that there be no gatherings that when I come. So what's the first principle? Principle number one is regular. Upon the first day of the week. Preacher said it the other night. He was preaching this. We, we worship on Resurrection Sunday. That's today. Right. Amen? Amen. Back in the Old Testament, they worshiped on Saturday. But we worship on Resurrection Sunday. So when we come to church on Resurrection Sunday, upon the first day of the week, that's Sunday, the Bible says we ought to regularly, 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 upon the first day of the week. Listen, every seven days Sunday comes around, amen? And it's the first day of the week, amen? And what God says we're to do regularly, 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 do what? He says here, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you in store, uh, lay in store, lay thy hand in store as God has prospered him. That means bring your tithes and offers to God's house. Amen? Amen? So it's supposed to be regular. Number two, it's, uh, notice the little phrase here. Let every one of you. And so that means it's all inclusive. Everybody. Amen. Don't let 10% be givers and 90% of you do nothing. God said every one of you. Amen. Every one of you. Amen. Let me ask you this. Number one, where's your heart at? Do you love the Lord? Right. right. Amen. Amen. Did he save you? Amen. Are you going to heaven because of it? Amen. You're going to get to enjoy the blessings there? Right. Is this God's house, God's church? Amen. Amen. Are we his children? Amen. Right. God wants us to preach the gospel to the entire world, starting right here in Jerusalem, which is growing up for us, our local, locale, our local church right here. And so what we're to do is support this local church here. Amen? Amen. So that we can get the glorious light of the gospel from this station right here to all the world right there, including Royal Up Virginia. Amen? Amen? Well, praise God. What a blessing that is. And so we see here, uh, we see here it's, it's supposed to be all-inclusive. How about this? It's supposed to be not only... Regular, all inclusive, but notice what it says, lay by him in store. We're to lay by him, in other words, it's supposed to be systematic. That's what the preacher said the other day, systematic. I have a system of giving. I know what I give. I know what I, I, I can tell you right now of what I give. I, I have a system of what I do and how I give. Last week I changed gears and gave a lot more to missions, amen, because it was missions week and we needed to do missions and I wanted to give more missions and I gave more missions, praise God, but my tithe is the Lord's and I gave all my tithe today, praise God. May I say every bit of it. I mean it's the Lord's, hallelujah. I have a system and systematic and it ought to be orderly and it ought to be right with God. Amen. Amen. Oh, God help you today. Listen, how about this? Notice this. Notice, everyone laid by him in store. And notice this. As God has prospered him. In other words, it's supposed to be proportion. As God has prospered him. In other words, you, you give in proportion to how God's blessed you. Amen. Right. Let me say something here. Many of you live on fixed incomes. It's fixed, ain't it? Say amen right there. Uncle Sam, don't give no more or no less. Say amen right there. So you've got pretty much, you pretty well know what you're going to give, don't you? Right. Amen. I was impressed by the story the preacher was preaching last week. Somebody, somebody he knew gave.
half or was it half or three four or I don't know what uh, of his of his monthly check that he, that he got from the government. And God kept blessing him, kept blessing him. You say, preacher, am I asking you? No, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm showing you a principle right here in the Word of God. As God has prospered you, so you give proportionally the same way. Amen. 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 If you reap, if you sow, what does it say right here? If you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. Amen. Amen. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Amen. Let's say I'm a farmer right here. I got a whole big bag of seeds. I go over here. And I throw two or three seeds over there. Right. And that's all I sow over there. I go over here and I spread the entire bag all over the whole I mean the whole bunch of them. What do you think is going to happen in very few weeks, three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, two months down the road? There's not much going to come out of them three seeds, but guess what's going to happen all across here? Right. Are you with me? And God says, as you proportionately sow, that's how you get. May I say to you today, as you proportionally give to God, that's how proportionally you'll be blessed as well. Amen. Anybody get this? Amen. If you ever get that principle of trying to understand the promises of God and realize that He will pour out, He said, prove me. I'm going to have to take another message just to get this cross here. He said, prove me. I'm going to get back to I might use it tonight here. But hey, 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 as you sow, you get. Amen. Not only do you get, but you get more, and you get more down the road. Amen? Amen. What I'm trying to say to you is this. Give it to the Lord will reap blessings. Amen? I'm going to stop right here because I'm going to use some more of this tonight. And I want to tell you today that give it right here. It says here, it says here, lay by in store. Well, as God, that there be no gatherings, and when I come, verse 3, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. In other words, they're going to take the offerings of the blessings of God and go bless somebody else. Amen? Right. And can I tell you, listen, as we give our offerings and our tithes to the Lord, it's going to bless others. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because you give it to the Lord's work. This is the Lord's work. I ain't got time to preach all this, so I'll preach some more of it tonight. Let me say this. Is this the Lord's work? Praise yes. God. Amen. You better believe this. Yes, sir. i got to tell you a story because most of you missed it the other night. The reason we have a lighthouse here is the reason we give our tithes and offerings is so that we have a local church here that gives the gospel the wonderful blessings of, of how the Lord saves how he died on an old rugged cross and shed his blood for our sins and we preach that gospel here and we preach it as we, our emphasis was to the whole world. Monday night, I believe it was, had a man show up at 6.30 out front here. He didn't know what we were doing. I never met the man. He lives over in Trapman somewhere. This was his words. Front door right out there in the foyer. He said, I need... About three dollars, get me some gas to go home to travel. That was his words. Well, that poor man, dear man, he didn't know he's supposed to come today. He didn't know that he walked into an ambush. Because <laughs> there's about seven, eight preachers standing here, and 30 of them were missionaries, all family members and everybody. And we had a big old meal back there. That was the night I cooked the spaghetti and everything, so I know it was a good meal. Say it. <laughs> and I said, you need three dollars? I had it in my pocket, couldn't give it to him, and shoved him on out of here and run him on out of here. I said, I tell you what, you come back here. We got. I said, you have any supper? He didn't have any supper. He walked, he walked back here in the back. And I was busy going every which way, so Bo Taylor's from North Carolina, one of our preachers here, we sat him down and fed him some supper. I said, Bo, sit him. I thought Bo knew what I meant. <laughs> Bo sat down and got right in his face. Started talking to him about the Lord. Just started talking to him about Jesus. Amen. We begged him to stay. He's sitting there eating that spaghetti dinner and fed him real good. Church had already started. I said, Bo, if you'll get him to stay, tell him that we'll take care of that $3. No, behold, here he comes. A little after seven, he, 
He comes walking in after he ate supper, sat down right here in this third pew right here, and Dr. Danny Whitson was preaching on witnessing. And the whole thing was about witnessing. He preached about salvation. He preached about eternal security. He preached about how you need to be baptized and join the church. And, and boy, he was preaching right here, Eddie, right here. Guess what? Boy, walk the aisle and receive Christ right here to save us. Monday night. If you don't give to church, bring your tithes and offerings, sinners will never get saved like that. They'd have never heard the gospel had there not been a church here. And there's not going to be a church here if we all don't collectively give unto the Lord. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me on this? That old boy didn't know anybody. I sure didn't know him. He was stood up right here. When he stood up, I said, I think his name is Chris. I said, Chris, I said, I appreciate you staying and eat supper with me. I appreciate you staying in the, in the, you know, in the service there and staying with me all the way through with me. And I said, I told you if you'd stay, we'd take care of you. You know what I did? I took up a $1 offering. I took a dollar bill from everybody's in the bill. That boy went home with over $100 in his pocket. His chin started quivering. He was so overwhelmed with the love of God. Oh, boy, got saved. Are y'all listening to me? Wednesday night, we had all these kids around here and all these mamas and daddies out here. And mamas and daddies went out here weeping for the children because they needed the Lord. Many of them don't know the Lord. And they need to be saved. Amen. Amen. Because we have a church that preaches the gospel and tells them the love of Jesus. Because we give to the Lord's work, many will get saved in this church. Amen. Many will be in heaven one day because of them. Amen. We had such a heavy burden in here Wednesday night. Brother Mike and Miss Beverly did a great job to Helping these kids, 30 of them, 30 of them out here, singing the glory of God. It was beautiful. It was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Amen. Guess what? The next day was Thursday. Beverly, Miss Beverly, taught chapel. Five of those boys and girls got saved on Thursday. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Five little precious. Five, six. Your old boys and girls. You can't have that unless you've got a people that have a heart for God and have a heart for giving and are willing to support and give their, 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 all they have to the Lord. Give your heart. Give your all. Amen. I support my church. Amen. There's blessing. That's the positive side. <clears throat> There's cursing. The message is sent today. The message is sent. Are you on the positive side or the negative side? Are you part of the giving that gets the blessings? Or is the cursing of God when you come back? If you come back tonight, we'll study Malachi chapter 3. Look at how the devourer comes. And different things like that. But then we'll look at the positive side. And look at the blessings. God said, prove me. I'll open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessings. Praise God, it's one of those give. I give just so I can see one more soul come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all come on, let's get a song. Amen. Isn't that wonderful today? I wonder how many, I wonder how many orphanages that we have supported. I wonder how many vacation Bible schools over in the country in Ukraine, all these countries. I wonder how many four, five, six, seven year olds will we see in heaven one day? Because that little list that I gave you a while ago, thirty dollars, 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 fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars. All these countries helping these poor missionaries stay on the mission field. Why? So another little four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, bow her head or his head, give their little heart to Jesus. Hey, folks, it's not giving. It's God. Amen. It's His work. I'm glad to be a part of that. Amen. I'm glad to be a part of that.
Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. If you come to God's house today looking for Him, He's here. He said, Call upon me. Brother Kenny sang it a while ago, Bow to me. Maybe you're hurting today and you need something from the Lord. Maybe there's something empty in your soul and you never trusted Christ before. You've never truly been saved. Well, can I tell you, He knows who you are. Amen. The Bible says He knows the hairs on our head, the number of them. God knows all about it. He knows when you're hurting. He knows when you're defeated. He knows what you need now, this morning. Amen. He'll meet every need. Amen. Maybe you just need the Lord to put His arm around you by the Spirit of God and say, Hey, I'm here to help you. I love you. Maybe you're here and you've never trusted Christ. You've never been saved. Listen, God still loves you. And He wants to save you. May I say, He wants to bless you. Amen. It's a blessing. You need to come to Christ. You come down this aisle today. We'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. Let's all stand and have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray you'll take more of the message today. A whole lot more things I want to say, can't say. Lord, I just can't get it all in, but I thank you, Lord. There is a positive side of giving. There's blessings. Lord, there's a negative side. If we don't, there's cursing. So, Lord, help us to be a part of the Lord's work. Investing in the Lord's work. Maybe there's somebody here today that just needs the Lord. They need some encouragement from the Lord. I pray you'd help them today. Maybe they just need to bow the knee and just pray. Maybe they need somebody else to just pray with them and love with them. Love on them and love each other. Lord, help us as God's people to love each other. Maybe we need, maybe we need prayer, Lord. Maybe we need some help. Maybe somebody needs to be saved today. Lord, whatever it is, I pray you speak to hearts. Help us, Lord, today to realize it's wonderful to give to the Lord's work. Take this invitation, I pray. Heads are bowed and we're praying. or they're just, they're just playing softly. How many of you got a need on your heart today? You say, the Lord knows all about it. You just say, preacher, I, I've got something on my heart today. The Lord knows about it. I, I need prayer. Just raise your hand towards him today. God bless you. Birds in here. I know those folks here. Got a burden here today. How many of you say, preacher, I'm not for sure I'm saved. I'm not for sure that I'm going to heaven when I die. And I'd like to make sure today before I leave here. In my heart, if I was to die in the next five minutes, I'm not sure heaven would be my home. Can I tell you, he wants to save you. How many of you said, preacher, just pray for me. I, I have a little trouble in my soul and I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm ready. And I'd like to know for sure. Pray for me about my salvation. Would you slip your hand up? Let me pray for you today. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Oh, God bless you today. Thank you. Heavenly Father, take the invitation now. Bless your people. In Jesus' name. What number is Brother Kim? Hymn number 588. 588. Let's sing the song. If something's struggling in your heart, you need to bring it to the Lord. You come on. We need to pray with you. We'll be glad to pray with you. Most certainly we'll pray with you. You bring it to the Lord. Bow the knee, Kitty says in the song. Bring it to the Lord. We have a great God. You come on today, Father Say. Come on. Oh, for Jesus, oh, for Jesus. All my being's ransom powers, all my thoughts and worlds and doings, all my days and all my hours. You need to come, come on. Oh, for Jesus, oh, for Jesus. That's it.
headed. You look at the Lord. I'm going to use myself personally. He's going to say to you and say to me. He said, David, I want to show you what your investment, your reward. Amen. He's going to turn and he's going to show me all the faces of every doctor that we invested in the Lord's work. I went to the Ukraine. We preached all week, had 60, 70, 80 kids on the street come out. Kids hugged my neck. I spent one week of my life with them. I probably will never see them again. Those little boys and girls gave their heart to Christ that week, bowed their head with me and wept tears with this preacher. God only knows what's going on over in Ukraine. You saw the news. But I wept with some little kids that gave their heart to Christ. All these days, all that money and all that, that we invested in the Lord's work. The Lord's going to turn around and say, look at all these faces. This one's from the Ukraine. This one's from Japan. This one's from Germany. This one's from Canada. This one's from Romania. Are y'all getting the picture? How many thousands of souls will be in in heaven rejoicing with us because we invested in the Lord's work? It's worth it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. You'll be back tonight. Shake hands with our visitors. Let's let this dear lady know we love her. Appreciate you coming. Amen. Brother, God bless your family for coming. Let's shake hands with one another. You'll be back tonight. Praise God. It'll be a blessing, Lord. I, I get so excited sometimes. I've been to some of them charismatic wildfire Holy Ghost meetings where they bring wheelbarrows in. So we're going to give this missionary some money. And praise God, they fill the wheelbarrow up, roll it out, out the building. Hallelujah. I gave everybody with my shoes and socks in that wheelbarrow that night. Amen. But I tell you, God gave it back, too. He blessed us so many times. If you ever get this principle, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Amen. Life. We'll discuss a little bit more of it tonight. All right? Y'all glad you came to church or not? Amen. Amen. I ain't after your money. I'm after your heart. Amen. 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 Lady out the door said, Preacher, you stepped on my toes. I told her, I said, I missed you a long way. I'm aiming for your heart. Amen. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) So let's go home and be dismissed in word prayer. Thank you for coming and thank you for being a part of the service today. We've had a great week this week. And I don't mean you're tired and wore out. But let's thank the Lord for what he's done. Okay. Brother Mike, dismiss us. We pray a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We are thankful that we had the opportunity, Father, to be here today. Father, to hear your word today and to tell us, Father, teach us, Father, how to serve you even better. Yes. Father Jesus, we pray for that one who raised her hand, didn't know whether they were saved or not. Lord Jesus, right now, don't let them leave till they know you as their Savior. They, too, one day spend eternity in heaven with you. Father, Father, those burdened hearts this morning, Father, the sick and and one to shut in that can't get out would love to be here. I pray, Father, you just your hand of God be upon them and you just you just help them only as you can. We'll love you, thank you, and praise you for who you are, what you've done, and what you're going to do, and I ask it all in Jesus.